and I'm now thrilled to introduce the uh, the first live panel debate we're going to have at the Arctic Knot. And the topic for the discussion is what role can indigenous language Wikipedia versions play in the strengthening of literacy for the circumpolar indigenous languages? And please share uh, your uh, questions and comments in, um, at, in the Telegram channels. And we will see if we have time at the end of the discussion to address them. And I'm now very happy to introduce the moderator for this panel discussion, uh, Andrea Antonio. She is a PhD student in the School of Languages and Cultures and Urban Studies and Planning at the University of Sheffield in the UK. And she's also currently volunteering with Wikitongs, undertaking research about how COVID-19 pandemic has impacted indigenous communities within language hotspots. So uh, I give the floor to Andrea, who will introduce all the panelists. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you very much, Astrid, for the introduction. And thank you to all the conference organizers for such a wonderful event so far. Um, good afternoon, maybe even good morning and uh, good evening for those of you joining across the world. It is my very great pleasure to welcome you all to the panel debate of the Arctic Knot Wikimedia Conference, inspired by the UNESCO International Decade of Indigenous Languages starting in 2022. Today we have four incredible panelists who will be discussing the role that Indigenous language Wikipedia versions can play in strengthening um, of literacy for the circumpolar Indigenous languages. And um, I will begin by introducing each of the members of the panel and then they will each have a few minutes to share their initial reflections on the topic, followed by a discussion prompted by some questions. And then as Astrid mentioned, at the end, if we have time, um, she'll let us know if there's any questions from the participants. So please do use all the channels to ask your questions along the way. So our first member of the panel is Leonor Lukshi, who is the Senior Archive Assistant and Communications Officer at the Endangered Languages Archive. She holds an MA in Language Documentation and Description from SOAS, University of London, and is part of the Quest Research Project at ZAS in Berlin, where she focuses on making language archive materials accessible to community members. Leonor, over to you to start. Thank you. Hi, um, well, thank you first of all for the introduction. I'm really um, excited to be here today and to take part in this panel debate. So um, the question of what role um, indigenous language Wikipedia versions can play in strengthening literacy in the second polar languages, um, I think is really interesting because there are so many topics to consider within that question. So one of the questions is how literacy can be strengthened in minoritized languages in general and whether or not that is useful at all. So is literacy the, got the goal? And if so, why? And um, that kind of goes towards questions of you know, languages versus, uh, as skills versus languages as identity, um, which obviously within minority languages is, is a very big um, topic. And then another question that comes up for me is um, who writes articles in sort of these smaller um, versions of Wikipedia and who reads them. So many of you will be aware of the issue of the Se1 Wiki, um, Wikipedia edition, which was written almost entirely by the LSJ bot. And that kind of highlights really nicely this issue of quantity versus quality, where we have millions of articles um, in a language, but they're uh, mostly just stubs with generic sentences. So I think that's something to be wary of. And going back to this question of who writes articles for whom, I'd be really interested personally in knowing how many users would actually author articles for these Wikipedia versions um, and how well the concept of Wikipedia, which is based on many people collaborating and editing, can work within sort of a very, very small group um, of people, a relatively small group of people. Um, and then yet another question that comes up for me is um, sort of the, what the idea behind minoritized language Wikipedia versions potentially strengthening literacy 
is whether it's geared towards practicing reading as well as writing, so how do we define literacy, um, and if strengthening literacy means to getting people to write articles in minoritized languages, how do you get them to do that, right? So would Wikimedia, for example, collaborate with schools and universities, um, for example, to get students who are speakers um, of minoritized languages to practice writing in their languages? Um, and then this sort of ties in with the question of how to get this content um, to the users, to the speakers of the languages. So how do they discover that contents in their languages exist? Um, who makes that connection? Or is it just of um, the hope that they will realize, oh, there's an article in my language, I'll have a look. So I'd be really interested in what the Wikimedians among you um, think about that. And then the next question for me is, when we ask this question of you know, what role minoritized language Wikipedia versions can play in strengthening literacy in those languages, um, how do we measure that? So um, is there a way of assessing the impact potentially made by Wikipedia? Um, and do we have mechanisms of finding out whether a minoritized language Wikipedia version um, has had a positive effect on literacy in that language? Um, yeah, so those are sort of a few of the um, the questions that um, came up for me when thinking about this panel debate, and I'd be really interested um, in hearing from um, from all of you what you think about that. Thank you very much, Leonor. And I, I love how you've asked a whole series of questions. As is often the case, we ask one question and then a whole cascade of other questions comes up. So that's great. Really nice way to start. Thank you very much. Um, our second member of the panel is Hanna Utakoski, who is an associate professor at the Department of Language Studies at Umea University in Sweden. She's a senior lecturer of North Sami, and her research focuses on multilingualism and literacy instruction in a minority context. Hanna, take it away. Yes, um, great to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. And as you already said, I come from the literacy and school research uh, field. And I see that in that field, we have a view that there is at least a good potential in the various ways in which Wikipedia and, and similar um, initiated um, kind of platforms could be utilized for the purposes of language revitalization and strengthening of literacy in small languages. And I come from the Sami background, so I, I talk more about those kind of um, experiences. And when used and introduced in the in a in a right way, and when there is a consensus of how to work with reliable facts and information and support for written language, then Wikipedia can certainly have an important role in that work um, and also creation of contextualized content could be seen as a fruitful literacy project in, in, for example, schools if the children together with their teachers could write genuine and authentic texts about familiar phenomena without the middle step of, of translation. And since I've done my field research in schools, I think it's maybe best to demonstrate with a few concrete examples how Wikipedia could strengthen the role uh, in Indigenous language development and lit uh, be a literacy booster. So first of all, um, Wiki and in Wikipedia is short for what I know is, and that means it's an open area in, uh, arena for knowledge creation and meaning making. And those kind of collaborative projects with other Sami or other indigenous minorities are thus at reach in a better and more accessible way than before. And that collaborative meaning making process can increase the visibility of collective knowledge in the community and also increase the visibility of the results of those processes worldwide. And second, uh, Wikipedia texts, they do not need to be complete and perfect, but they in themselves offer good opportunities for language teachers to demonstrate the effects and possibilities of open language editing, for example. Um, but this view um, on editing um, and Wikipedia, of course, poses a challenge for lesser known and written languages since good level of language editing is really needed for the users and contributors so that the contents can actually be used in language revitalization and development. And without language editing, 
the text may, of course, have the opposite effect um, and repel uses of Wikipedia in language instruction. So there you have to be cautious too. So the role of Wikipedia in the strengthening of literacy is thus quite clear, as it is at least threefolded and concerns language learning and instruction, uh, creating of content for meaning making processes, and, and it also offers good proper uh, opportunities to train language editing skills. But I also want to stress that there is more to Wikipedia than just literacy contents and instructions. So creation of those contextualized contents that can be instantly shared with other indigenous people, or at least with the members of the own language community, they are part of the strengthening of the culture and its culture knowledge base. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hannah. Very, very interesting. Thank you. Um, our third member of the panel is Jan Harald Sobi, who is a community manager of Wikimedia Norge, the Norwegian Wikimedia chapter, and a member of the Wikimedia Foundation language community. His recent work has focused on the Wikimedia Northern Sami project. And Jan, over to you. Thank you. Uh, I feel like a miniature among giants here <laughs> because I don't feel nearly as accomplished. But it's uh, really nice to be here. Uh, and like I said, I'm a member of the Wikimedia Language Committee, which is, uh, uh, well, we first created the rules for uh, uh, for how, <laughs> for what the Wikipedia edition needs to accomplish before it gets the, uh, before it is approved. Uh, and nowadays we just make sure that the, uh, the new projects uh, uh, follow those rules or, well, uh, that they meet the criteria. It's a better term. So, um, yeah, and I've been interested in uh, languages and Wikimedia for a long time. I think that's really what appealed to me the most in the beginning when I started editing Wikipedia uh, 16 years ago, uh, was the multilingual act aspect of it. Uh, and I think the minority and indigenous language aspect is also really, really important. So. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm happy that there is so much uh, activity going on in this area uh, and really happy to be helping organize this uh, conference as well. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Yuan. Yes, it's been a great conference indeed so far and your contributions are very helpful for the discussion. Thank you. Um, so our fourth member of the panel is Trond Rostevod, who is a professor of Sami language technology in the language and culture department at the Arctic University of Norway. His research interests center around language technology, morphological theory, machine translation, and parser-based computer-assisted language learning. We've already heard from Trond Ulrje, but yes, please, the floor is yours and please share your thoughts. Thank you. So if you just hit the mute microphone button, you should be able to unmute yourself and then hopefully we will be able to hear you. There, I yes. thought you should do it. I did it myself, yes, good. So fine. So um, thank you very much and thank you for good um, uh, setup of the discussion. So to the question, what role can Wikipedia's play for indigenous languages? I start with the question, what role does Wikipedia play for indigenous languages today? Uh, and then go on to what can it do? Uh, so the sad answer to this is that despite they're in the circumpolar region that I looked about or looked on in my in, in my talk, if we if you take away the non-indigenous languages, the minority languages, we are left with slightly less than 40 languages that could be classified as indigenous languages. Uh, and out of these, one and perhaps two have an active language community writing. Inari Sami is the one and perhaps Veps. Um, so I think we should understand why one out of 40 is sort of the sad result. And my list for that would be that the best speakers, they're old and illiterate. Um, the <laughs> writing system is younger than, 
the best than the fluent speakers. The young revitalized speakers, they have their hands full already. And there also is a tradition for using the minority language as a language for explaining things, which is because they went to school in majority languages. So, and there's one thing that hasn't been mentioned at all, but I have seen myself. So it could be that having other people correcting one's language, a language that one perhaps has struggled to learn, uh, may be off-putting. I don't have, I mean, the alternative would be not to correct a language, which of course would be would be a, a bad option. But this is this is actually something that that should be uh, should be addressed. Um, uh, how to how to deal with possible uh, conflicts and sore feelings linked to to the collective aspect of collective writing for something that for so many is a personal matter, which is the language that they are in the in the terminology taking back or learning. Also, indigenous people don't come from homes with Encyclopedia Britannica in the bookshelf. And um, this is something and the Wikipedia editions may be hijacked anyway, and pushing real writers away as I always I also I showed this out Sami as an example. Um, there are others uh, in Inuktitut, for example. No, in Inupiaq is the worst, actually, worse than even worse than the South Summer. So then, for the potential uh, that these uh, Wikipedia's thirty-nine ones could offer, they could offer, as I see it, an arena for writing and for for taking your writing seriously, because. The writer will write not only for his or her teacher, but for everyone. And it could also offer info on topics, and it could offer examples on how to write school um, uh, assignments, uh, which of course there are very few models for uh, in indigenous languages since the literacy is so small. And it could also offer interwiki links so to check that i got the right terminology for this bird or for this um institution in society or for this whatever um we have heard earlier today what that there is a need for wikipedia because in order to get access to knowledge so access to knowledge for all the seven thousand languages and so on and so on uh, this is actually not the case as I see it, because so um, it's not that the need for Wikipedia's for these languages is need for info in my language, because the, in, the, the, the people speaking circumpolar languages that are, Ill, that are literate, they are primarily literate in the majority language. So, and the majority language is the language in which they are used to, to find information of course i'm i'm sort of working for a world when, where that's not true i'm working for a world where uh information should be ac accessed only also in the heritage language also in the in the mother tongue in the case of mother tongue but but this is not the case now with one exception i should say which is greenlandic greenlandic is a monolingual literal society literal in greenlandic that have a shitty Wikipedia in Greenlandic, and I really feel sorry for them. So if one is sort of thinking of this classical, oh, the information should be available for everyone, then one should focus on Greenlandic and Greenlandic only. But with, if one is to look at Wikipedia as a of literacy, that's something different. Uh, but that can be done. But as we see, 1 to 40 is the odds is small. So thank you. Thank you very much Trun, for that introduction. And I think that leads very nicely into our first question, which um, we'll just keep it really broad to get the ball rolling. And I think you've already alluded to this, but if you'd like to start by addressing, you know, when does a small Wikipedia edition become useful, at least in some way? And then I think if somebody else would like to speak to the question after Trun, maybe if you just Put your hand up on the camera and then we can pass on to you that'd be great <laughs> over to you Trun. okay okay so you you want <laughs> went right on to me okay yeah so um 
I've been giving that a thought. I started working on the new Norsk Wikipedia when it had 7,000 languages. I was useful as a source of information. But that, that were 7,000 good articles. So North Sami Wikipedia has 7,000 not good articles. But still with context, I think that 10,000 articles are, can be interesting if they are on the interesting topics. And I think that interwiki links um, can be uh, useful already from an earlier stage, and it's also easier to make more ones. For outsiders, for say, for example, me, I'm now going to make keyboards for these language for very many languages, then it's very useful to have a small body on of text for all sort of compiler languages. Uh, if I were to look at syntax, then I would should be very skeptical to the quality of the language. But but there are things that make it useful, although it's hard to know exactly when. Great, thank you very much. Um, okay, so moving on to more kind of practical considerations. Um, what kind of topics should ideally be covered by indigenous language Wikipedia versions? Uh, maybe Leonor, do you want to start with this one? Yeah, sure. So um, this is like really closely tied to what Hannah said about the creation of contextualized contents. Um, and I think one of so the beauty of a of a project like Wikipedia is that it's you know, it's community driven. There's not this top down approach, um, but there's no one that says these are the topics that should be covered. And um, I'm not going to suggest sort of a list of topics that should be covered. Um, but I think it is worth thinking about, um, and this was mentioned before, um, which articles would actually be useful and relevant um, to the speakers of the languages they're written in. Um, and um, so this is what Trump said about um, Greenlandic um, and then about the other um, circumpolar languages where most of the time you have people who actually, if they're literate, do speak um, another larger language that is better represented on Wikipedia. Um, and I think something that sort of helps maybe um, as a concept is sort of, um, the question of communities of practice. Um, and there's what we see in social linguistics where um, what we see described over and over again, um, where people use one language or one register within the home with the family and then another one um, at work and then yet another one at the market, for example. Um, and I think this is something we can transfer to um, the way people use Wikipedia. So um, English isn't my native language, but most of the time um, I will um, use the English Wikipedia because there's just so much more in-depth information a lot of the time. Um, but when I want to know something about, say, the history of a certain neighborhood in Berlin, um, I'll use the German language Wikipedia because I'm, I'll, my hope is that I'll find sort of um, more in-depth or better information in the German language Wikipedia. And similarly, if I want to know something about my grandmother's village in Bolivia, I'll use the Spanish version of Wikipedia because it's more likely that there's information in that um, in that uh, language. Um, and I think that sort of, um, that, I mean, similarly to what Trent said um, before, you know, um, it's not so much about um, giving people access to knowledge in general um, in, that, in their languages, but um, when we speak about the circumpolar languages, um, but sort of contents that are really useful to the people who will use these versions of Wikipedia. Um, and then on the other hand, of course, you could say sort of having random contents <laughs> covered in indigenous language Wikipedia versions is nice to have because any piece of writing in a minority, in a minoritized language is documentation of some sort. But, um, but I think the content does need to be relevant to the people using these Wikipedia versions. And ideally, there'll be some level of um, of expertise um, about certain topics that might not be found on a more generic um, English or Norwegian or Russian article on the same topic. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you very much, Leonor. And um, I think this was a topic that Tlen raised earlier in his discussion as well about in the presentation about, you know, how do we how do we access the actual needs and, you know, of the communities that um, we're trying to support and, you know, how how do their literacy practices um, impact the way that we, we can support them? Does anybody else want to maybe expand on that? Yeah, I can have one short. So, for example, for the Inari Sama Wikipedia, there is articles on each of the central heritage speakers that ensured that this missing generation learned the language. So only the old people speak, spoke the language. The kids learned it in, in language nests, and the middle generation learned it from key um, Older spe elder speakers and these key elder speakers now have their own personal articles uh, articles about them on the Inarisami Wikipedia and on non other Wikipedia in the world, which of course is understandable. I think that's a good thing. One could also think of, for example, Sami handicraft or 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 other things that are more interesting to. So there are certainly topics that are more interesting to the speakers of this language than to <laughs> speakers of other languages. So, so when one get one gets there, then then we're talking, or then the speakers in the community are talking. Yes, thank you. Um, perhaps we can consider like why the visibility and the online presence of indigenous and minority languages are so important for literacy development in those languages. Um, maybe over to you, Hannah, to start with that. Thanks. Um, I think that there are at least two sides to this question and visibility and online presence, they are connected uh, to, to status and identity. So both the, of those concepts are crucial for successful language revitalization and development. And at the same time, also visibility of flawed content or poor language, they can have the opposite effect of language development. So it's, it's kind of a very careful balance game. But I think that Wikipedia is um, often much used information search site in, for example, in schoolwork. And I'm again talking from my own perspective in the school research uh, world. Um, children look for words, facts and information. And I've seen this in schools during both learning to write and writing to learn uh, classes. And many times good articles in Wikipedia, they include kind of a solid knowledge base in the form of reliable sources and references. And from there, the pupils then have the possibility to go on and look for more detailed sources if they need those. And language and contents, they are that those that are visible on this arena, they are automatically get more attention. And the value and status of the source language then is strengthened and, and finding the information in one's own language would, I think, it would make also the internalization of that information easier. But however, the, I think that the situation that I've seen, um, that I've witnessed in schools is that in practice, uh, Sami speaking uh, indigenous peoples, often they look for content in English or in the majority language, either because the content is missing in Sami, because they don't know it's there, because the information is partial or, or it's linguistically flawed, or because they are a bit uncertain about uh, spelling and search strategies. So there are kind of many difficulties for them to find the information, even if it was there in Sami. But I think that visibility and online presence uh, of high quality indigenous language content is certainly needed to balance the otherwise heavily tilted majority and English language content that we can find. And I'm a little bit concerned about the problems with translation because um, what I've seen in schools is that when they would want to make their own texts, uh, then they start with translation and they don't have translation strategies. Um, they don't know how to translate and they get stuck. Um, so I think what Leonor also said, if you start with things that are most important for you and you would give the people who are writing the possibility to choose those um, topics that are most closest to the heart, then it would be maybe easier also to create that content in, in your own language. But I think that 
um, um, so this content, it should not be a tra direct translation of some other language and it should be carefully language edited. But I, I do see that in order to have that status and that um, feeling of uh, my, my language is also there in the net, then it's important to really, that it show, it's shown, it's, uh, that it's visible. Yes, thank you, Hannah. Um, Leonor, I saw you nodding a lot. Did you want to just come back in on that, or shall I move on to it? Oh, that's okay. We, um, I just um, agree yeah, agree <laughs> with a lot that Hannah just said. All right, that's great. Um, then perhaps kind of um, thinking about the practicalities of how we might support the kinds of um, entries that Hannah is suggesting, maybe we can hear from Yun to kind of hear what it takes to get a Wikimedia project in a new language approved and maybe like strategies that from, you know, like the organizational perspective of these platforms that we might be able to support that kind of um, content being created that is most useful for the communities that are using it. Yon, over to you. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. So uh, the requirements currently for creating a new language edition of Wikipedia or any Wikimedia project uh, is that you need to have uh, a community, an active community that uh, builds the Wikipedia. Because there have been a lot of projects proposed by one person, edited by one person, and our goal as the language committee is to make sure that a new Wikipedia edition is viable, that it can actually survive on its own. Like, uh, if that one person disappears, if the Wikipedia dies, then that's not really a good sign at all. So we want to make sure that there are a certain number of active editors uh, who are participating and that not everything relies on one person. Uh, that's the most important requirement. And there are also some technical requirements, like you need to have an ISO 639 code uh, for the language, but for most languages, that's not usually a problem. Uh, and you also need to translate the interface of MetaWiki, which is the software that Wikipedia run, runs on. Uh, you don't have to translate all of it because it's something like 10,000 different messages. So for the first project, uh, the requirement is just to translate about the 500 most important uh, messages. Uh, and once that, that's done, we kind of hope that the, it gets the ball rolling. So if someone wants to translate more, then they're welcome to. Uh, and I think actually Amir Aharoni and some other people are having a talk about this uh, in the video pool for the conference, I think. So uh, if anyone's interested in that, they should check it out. Um, but yeah, uh, the most, like a lot of people think that uh, uh, a requirement for getting a new edition of Wikipedia is to have a lot of articles. And that's not actually the case. Like, yeah, we have approved Wikipedia's with as few as like 300 articles or something. Um, so what we're mainly looking at is the activity by several people and over time. Uh, so if anyone wants to start a Wikipedia in a new language, that's uh, where they should start. Yeah. Yeah, Leonor, do you want to jump in? Go ahead. Yeah, I um, I have a question about what you just said, Jan. So um, because you said that you know you sort of monitor um, the activity of um, people on these um, editions, and um, and you said in the beginning that we want to make sure that there are enough editors. Um, do you sort of actively um, try to, or are there any mechanisms that you use um, to get people? Um, to edit versions if you realize there aren't enough editors for a specific edition? Yeah, so uh, in order to get the language, you first have to uh, create the, what we call like a test wiki in the Wikimedia incubator, uh, which is one common wiki where everyone can edit the, the new Wikipedia in their language. Uh, and uh, we, uh, the language community, we monitor like uh, the the projects that are there to see what's active and what's not, and we also have some specific tools to to show us the the level of activity for for a specific language edition. Um, 
but uh, I mean, uh, if someone starts uh, starts a Wikipedia in 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 a very small language now and they uh, disappear, uh, that doesn't mean that the content disappears. We don't go and actively delete anything, unless of course it's you know gibberish or hoax or something, which has happened a few times. So I mean, if if the content looks uh, looks good, then it will stay there. But of course, it won't be as visible as if it had its own official Wikipedia edition. So it could be harder to find by googling, for example. Great, thank you. Yes, um, and kind of wondering, wondering more broadly, uh, what can the Wikimedia chapters or other outsiders do to support the development of indigenous and minority language Wikipedians? And maybe what should they not be doing? Um, Tun, should we go over to you for this one? Again, that mute button. Yeah, um, so I think actually, uh for the wikimedia chapters to reach out and discuss with uh, uh editors active editors potential editors actually has a great value as you can see from from the in Sami case um what happened to my computer now it went dark wait a minute i don't know why can you hear me? Sorry, we can still see you and hear you, so it's okay, okay from I our side. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I cannot see my own notes. So wait a minute. Okay, no, uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm sorry. So, so, um, um, I think that the feeling of being seen is uh, is important. Uh, also, I think that all help with info boxes, templates, front page, the technical stuff um, is important. And it's also important, I mean, so if one wants to support uh, a small Wikipedia, then a continuous support on these topics is important. And also sort of be there and create a work environment, uh, but not be too close because we, we really want it would be very nice to have discussions going on in the minority language. And if you are the one that doesn't don't know the minority language, you, you will then prevent the minority language community to use a minority language, which is negative. So, so there should be sort of a, a balance there between closeness and, 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 and distance. But be there and create a work environment and around seminars. Uh, I, I think uh, the Wikimedia chapters have a role, but not the crucial one because the crucial ones is for the ones that know the language. Yeah. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Um, and what about, you know, what other Wikimedia projects besides Wikipedia and um, the indigenous language contributors, what should they look into? You know, and I think that leads nicely on from Tron's kind of discussion there. Do you want to take this one? Yeah, thank you. So uh, we're talking a lot about Wikipedia here. And I mean, Wikipedia is in the title of the of the session, so that makes sense. Uh, but uh, we have to remember that there are a lot of sister projects to Wikipedia that uh, can be as interesting as Wikipedia for, you know, doing uh, language uh, well, uh, language outreach. I guess uh, I don't want to say conservation, or because that's not really what we want. Revitalization uh, is probably the best word. Uh, and the most obvious one is um, is uh, Wikidata, uh, where you can input, uh, you know, uh, because Wikidata is very multilingual. Uh, it has been si since the start. Uh, so you can enter uh, labels and descriptions for, for things in Wikidata in basically all languages. And if it's for some reason not possible in your language, you can request your language to be, uh, to be, uh, activated. Um, and we also have a cool thing on Wikidata called Lexemes, uh, which is where you can uh, enter words and with all their forms and grammatical info and stuff, uh, which can later on be used by this new project, Abstract Wikipedia. It almost sounds like I'm trying to plug other talks, but uh, <laughs> Mahir256 will be talking about Lexemes later on today. 
And then Danny Vrandovic, who is the founder of Wikidata and the founder of Abstract Wikipedia, uh, will give a keynote at the end of the day. So, um, but yeah, I really think that uh, the Wikidata is sort of like the, the future for uh, a lot of the stuff we're doing with uh, languages instead of just creating, focusing on Wikipedia. Um, but yeah, in addition to Wikidata, there's also a wiki source, uh, which is, if if you don't know what Wikisource is, it's kind of like Project Gutenberg, where you take public domain works uh, and you transcribe them uh, so that it becomes, you know, uh, readable to both humans and machines and stuff instead of just being a scanned page uh, on an archive website uh, somewhere. Uh, so, and the great thing about Wikisource is that you don't actually have to know the language in order to transcribe. Uh, myself, I've transcribed the entire uh, New Testament in Northern Sami, even though I don't know Northern Sami myself, but I mean, I know how to read and I know how to spell or write. So, so anyone can do that really. Um, and it's actually really, uh, really relaxing and almost soothing in a way to just sit there and, uh, and do those transcriptions. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. Uh, and finally, we also have Wiktionary, which is, as the name suggests, a dictionary uh, built the wiki way. Uh, and there's a lot of overlap between what you do with Wikidata lexemes and what you do in Wiktionary. Uh, not so much overlap in terms of uh, reusing one for the other yet, but hopefully that's coming. Um, but yeah, in Wiktionary, you can, the great thing about Wiktionary is that every Wiktionary is multilingual. So the English Wiktionary has terms for all languages and I mean any language dictionary can have terms for all other languages if that makes sense uh, so even if there's no dictionary for your language you can still add words from your language in another language dictionary dictionary I hope that makes sense <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah thank you Yes, thank you. And that, that's very interesting. And I heard you mentioned kind of literacy um, as a goal at the beginning of, of what you were saying there. And I was just kind of wondering how relevant is literacy at all in general about, you know, for the revitalization of minoritized languages? Um, Leonore, do you want to start with this one and maybe? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so I think, first of all, what we need to sort of ask ourselves is how we define literacy. So what do we mean when we say someone is literate in a certain language? Do we mean they're able to read? Do we mean they're able to write um, or both? Do we mean someone is able to use a specific orthography um, or an official orthography? Um, and sort of in language um, revitalization and language documentation projects, we see a lot of focus um, in general on, on literacy in minoritized languages. And obviously, there are really good reasons for that. So, um, you know, we have this promise of the digital um, world democratizing, uh, ac democratizing access to um, to knowledge, but um, literacy is like the the bottleneck sort of for languages to be used in in the digital world. So. Um, all of the projects that uh, Jan just um, mentioned are, are based on um, on writing. So we have this huge written bias in the digital world, um, and really, what we sort of what people need to to participate fully in the um, in the digital um, sphere is to be literate in in English or a few other non marginalized languages, um, and. One thing we we see a lot in sort of language documentation projects is people wanting to create an orthography for their language, um, and then a lot of the times um, no one actually knows how to use this official orthography properly, or you only have one linguist who created an orthography, and they're the only person who actually knows how to use it or uses um, uses it consistently. Um, so there's sort of a question of how useful that actually is. Um, and Trent mentioned the, um, before the issues around being corrected in your writing, um, which might be off-putting for, um, for younger users of languages, um, which is sort of quite similar to linguistic purism we see in oral language use. Um, so 
elders who sort of correct younger people and then younger people not speaking a language because they feel they can't get it right. Um, and I think we sort of need to be sort of aware of this, of one of this very strong written bias and then of, um, of the Western bias of kind of, you know, how, uh, what is knowledge, how is information structured, how is information presented, which um, obviously is an issue with Wikipedia as well, you know, um, all Wikipedia articles have sort of this very particular structure. Um, but coming back to sort of um, whether literacy um, or the, uh, yeah, um, how relevant literacy is in the re revitalization of minoritized languages. Um, I think what Hannah um, said before, you know, um, this, the question of representation, um, especially in the digital sphere, um, can be really valuable to revalorize a language. Um, and that's sort of the first step towards revitalizing it. Um, so we need this change in attitude first. Um, so we have, if we have a positive attitude, um, which is tied to visibility and representation, um, then that can hopefully lead to revitalization. Um, but something that we um, that we see a lot with young language activists around the world um, in like, lots of different contexts uh, at the moment is. Um, that um, sort of the the exploration of um, of oral um, spheres rather than written ones. So um, the use of minoritized languages in audiovisual social media like TikTok and Instagram um, rather than written, or um, the use of minoritized languages in hip hop. So again, sort of um, very strong focus on um, on orality rather than literacy. Um, but yeah, so. Again, coming back to what Hannah said before, I think those of this visibility, the representation can be really valuable um, to revalorize languages. Yeah, thank you, Leonor. Hannah, do you want to jump in on there and kind of add? It sounds like a natural progression. You might want to add something there. No, I, I think I agree with everything you say. Um, it's, it's um, and I also, as a literacy um, a researcher, I think that we have to remember that everyone, almost everyone here in the world is now literate or becoming literate, um, learning to write and read. And if some languages are excluded from that, um, then of course it will uh, have a negative impact on the revitalization processes too. So I think that it is important to remember that what you said that the, the texts and and written uh, content it's so it's everywhere and if you only can read it and write it in in other languages than your own then of course then you will choose those languages most of the time and that's that's going to be negative for the development of your language Yeah, and from your perspective, kind of working with, you know, school age children, what do you think might be the biggest challenges of using Wikipedia and Indigenous school projects and literacy instruction? Um, well, I think that there are some potential obstacles that need to be overcome. And one of them has to do with the teachers and uh, their writing skills and, their, and even more um, specifically their skills in instructing writing. So, uh, for example, in the Sami community, writing skills um, um, and also in other Indigenous communities, they vary a lot between individuals and also between teachers who are t language teachers. And so you can have people who understand and speak the language, but there is a substantial uh, number of uh, people, even teachers who themselves struggle with writing and, and how to teach writing. And I guess that this, at least what I've seen is that um, uh, a lot is related to the education content that they get in their teacher education. If you go to majority education, then you will not learn those strategies. And if teachers are not sure how to write, uh, then they will not be so likely to start up with writing projects. And if they don't have the right support, and they don't know how to use uh, Wikipedia or other similar uh, platforms for teaching and, and uh, teaching writing, then of course it's, it's a difficult thing. So I think with the very good support for the teachers, 
and having spelling and grammar programs and tools that, for example, Trond is working with these technical tools, tools that then the teachers could, uh, they could become uh, confident writing teachers also in these uh, situations and create very interesting projects. And of course, I would say that um, if I look at my own life personally and what would be a kind of a thing that would make it difficult for me to have these kind of projects with my students, it is time. So um, just having that time, like Toronto also earlier said, people are already busy with everything else. So how can they find that time to put an effort into even a new thing? and create content somewhere when when there are so many other things that they are where they are needed in this process so of course um there are there are challenges and i think a lot has to do with education how how do we talk about new kinds of platforms new kinds of um projects that you can start how can we initiate and and inspire teachers and other people to use those and I'm I'm positive. I think that it can be done, but then e- even us who are working at universities as the instructors, we need to have the knowledge of how to do that. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, Trun, do you want to add something there, or I'll, I'll let you come in I if you'd know, like. I, I think that the the main thing uh, that that Hannah came with was the, the, the sort of the, the practical. Uh, experience from uh, the classroom, uh, which which I think is needed in the discussion. So 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 that's very very, very important. Uh, and um, of course, being confronted with a, with a, um, a sentence like the teacher's writing skills vary a lot, I think is very healthy, or sort of um, uh, reality therapy, as they say in Finnish. So, so, so this is very, very important. Uh, on the other hand, I think that confronting the school system with the possibility of having pupils uh, publishing and self-correcting and peer-correcting their text is actually such an interesting challenge that I have a hard time understanding that the school system doesn't take it up. Yes, thank you. And so why, thank why you. is that, Hannah? <laughs> Hannah, do you want to come back on any final thoughts out there? Or who knows? I, I guess it's, again, it's this time question. It's teachers are already, they are flooded with everything. They have to take care of all the parts of language skills, not only literacy and writing. Well, thank you to all of the panelists who have shared their thoughts and reflections on this and for our lively discussion so far. And we do have a few minutes left, so I'd like to take some questions from the audience. Um, And we've got a few questions that have come through. Um, So we'll start with, um, are there any topics or archive material that should not be shared on Wikimedia projects from Indigenous languages and underrepresented groups? Um, would anybody like to speak to this question? Yeah, great, Jan, come on in. Yeah, I, I remember there was a great, great talk by uh, Dr. Ingrid Cummings at Wikimania in 2019. Uh, she was talking about the Noongarpedia, which is a project to create a Wikipedia in the Noongar language, which is an uh, Australian original language. And uh, the culture, as far as I understand, I mean, um, but uh, the culture there is like, uh, well, uh, it's sort of based around, you know, who should know what. It's sort of almost like a classification system, you know. Uh, And there are all kinds of constraints, like you're not allowed to mention the name of a dead person at all. And that makes it really difficult to write an encyclopedia, you know, (laughs) like if you can't mention Darwin or... uh, or Newton or whatever. So uh, for, for uh, you know, if your language or culture has constraints like that, uh, you should be really careful about what you put on Wikimedia projects because Wikimedia projects are obviously almost like the opposite of that, you know, in that everything is open for everyone. So 
uh, we should be sensitive about those those issues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this ties in really nicely with the question of, you know, um, what is knowledge? How do you present knowledge? How do we structure and present information? And sort of shows very nicely this Western bias because we have lots of different cultures where um, there are sort of, well, because you mentioned the Australian context and in a lot of Australian languages, um, you have this concept of um, people who own a language, um, which is sort of very different from um, from what you know, you described on Wikipedia, where we say everything should be open, all knowledge should be shared, um, and just to sort of um, tie, uh, chime in on this question of archive materials that should not be shared on um, on Wikipedia. So we have um, this issue at the Endangered Languages Archive a lot, where um, sometimes so we want most of our materials to be openly or at least publicly accessible um, to our users um, but we get a lot of materials as well that are restricted for different reasons so either because of these reasons for example um, for a certain amount of time after someone has died you're not allowed to show a picture of them or to mention their name as against the um, in a lot of Australian um, languages um, or it can also be because with a lot of um, these minoritized languages, we're speaking about people who are um, also politically marginalized um, and having certain um, information about them um, sort of openly available um, might actually be harmful to them, right? Because they're in sort of, um, because they're usually not in um, very powerful positions politically speaking. Um, so I think that's something to also um, keep in mind. Yeah, thank you, Leonor. Um, we have two very specific questions for Hannah. Maybe if I can read them both and then um, if you'd like to address them. Um, so any ideas how we can integrate writing Wikipedia articles and proofreading them with the Sami language um, education in the universities? For example, students who will become mother tongue teachers could get to learn if correct texts um, in indigenous language revitalization translation students could be used for um, yeah, to, to practice this. Yeah, and then um, another very specific question. So how can we work together with teachers to ensure that the curriculum topics are found in Northern Sami so students can also find the information in Northern Sami? Thank you. Yes, well, for the second uh, question, I think that the, this could be uh, a project for the Sami parliaments to, to pay money for a group of people to produce the articles that are needed for that content. So I don't think that would be a big problem at all. And there could be really professionals from different fields who would be writing things. Um, so if you just have the money, uh, you can buy that time from people and then they can work with the, with the content that is needed. So I think that could be quite easily just easily solved, but I think it's a very important question that we we should have at least the school uh, curriculum content uh, accessible uh, somewhere. Um, and I think that for the first question, um, I don't think it is difficult at all to use, uh, for example, the Gela Techno tools that uh, Trond is working with, and uh, and everyone at Gela Techno. Um, so you can actually use the tools online and you can work with your text online and then you can move it into uh, Wikipedia. So just having done that and then having a teacher who is also working with literacy and texts and text teaching, um, then it, I think that, but we need more people working with uh, also writing instruction at the higher level education in, in, in minority languages so that these kind of projects can be done. But for many languages, and at least specifically for North Sami, there are already very good tools that could that could be instantly used. Yes, Yun, come on. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, what you mentioned there about the the education and the curriculums, uh, I would recommend that you watch the the video about the Basque education program from the previous Celtic North conference, uh, because they have a, an amazing program there. Uh, in the way they do things. So it's very inspirational. I have downloaded all the Circumpolar Wikipedias for 
for this for my talk earlier today and it's possible everyone can do that and uh, in my professional life I'm working as Lena as Lena as Hannah said with proofing tools so we have uh, made proofing tools for perhaps 10 out of these 40 languages in different quality but still so it's it's possible what you could do you could open the whole Wikipedia in a text document without pictures the north sami wikipedia is 800 a4 pages 800 so so and then you can uh, put on the 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 proofing tool and 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 see and look at the, the errors there so there are there are ways of uh, of doing that yes Lovely. Thank you all. Um, and I know we're basically out of time, but I'd really like to end with this one last question, which is really great about kind of hope and looking to the future and what we hope to get. So um, what, what do we think that the kind of um, decade of indigenous languages that UNESCO is starting now in 2022, what can we hope to see coming out of this? What kind of positive change do, do you all hope to see? Um, yeah, if anybody, if you all want to speak to this, maybe just a brief kind of you know, moment. Uh, anyone want to start? Hopes for the future? Yeah, Hannah, great. Well, yes, I can just say that I don't start in 2022. I already started. I'm working with it. So um, I'm always hopeful and positive. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this work. So uh, I can't just put a year and say that year we will put our effort in it. I'm, we have to work it with it now when we can. Um, yeah, I think I completely agree with <laughs> Hannah. There's sort of there shouldn't be a, a time restraint on this, but I think um, this type of you know, UNESCO declaring the decade of Indigenous languages does help to raise awareness and to visibilise um, Indigenous languages or minoritised languages. Mm. Yeah, today most circumpolar languages have speakers older than their orthographies. Uh, this will change. Uh, the speakers will, <laughs> I mean, the orthographies will become older than the speakers. And, and so for the speakers that will become the speakers of the next generation, uh, their literacy will increase compared to the older speakers. Their fluency will drop, but their literacy will increase. So uh, that will actually mean that Wikipedia will become more important for minority languages as literacy will be, will become more important. Whether the language communities are interested in and are able to utilize Wikipedia, I don't know. One out of 40 isn't too... Well, we can say that, yeah, one did. <laughs> so it's possible. So let me stop with this. Let me finish with that one. Inari Sami did, which proves that it is a good idea and that it is possible. Yeah, did you want to jump in there or yeah? No, I'm all good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, in that case, then um, I would like to thank all of the panelists for this vibrant panel debate. Um, I think we can all agree that it's been a really fruitful discussion and you've all given us plenty to think about. So thank you to Leonor, Trun, Jan, and Hannah for taking the time to be part of the panel debate today. Um, I think we now have a break, but I'll hand back over to Astra to give us more information. And thank you to everyone for participating and for your questions. Thank you so much, Andrea, and thank you to all the panelists for uh, taking time to join this, uh, this very interesting panel discussion. <laughs>